Hey, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Lisa and I are here today. We're going to bring you a really different video, something that we've uh, not really touched on much before. And uh, we hope you'll watch it all the way to the end because there's a definite message, I think, in this that we need to discuss. And so this may be part one of three. We'll see what happens and we're just going to wing it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. everyone welcome back thanks for hanging in there so um, I want to start out today that this video is going to be about my career as a shooting instructor um, we'll see if we do part two and three or not uh, that'll be a little different we'll just kind of play it by ear but I want to give a little disclaimer to start with this video is not going to contain any violent acts or anything that um, will be construed wrongly by uh, the powers that be so to speak and, um, you know, I just want you to know that everything that we involved in here in this video is going to be with inanimate objects. We may put up a few pictures, but um, yeah, we're not going to go there. So uh, if you're looking for our normal video on Ecuador, this is probably not going to be it. Um, this is just a video that I think has a message that people need to hear. And so, um, you know, I no longer give shooting instructions, so we'd ask that you Please don't ask. <laughs> um, okay, without further ado, let's just get into it, see what happens. Okay, so Joe, why did you get into shooting instruction? That's kind of a, a long, long story, but I started uh, skeet shooting in the 80s. A boss of mine and a friend named Jim Butler um, got me into it, and it was the, I just took to it like a duck to water. And it was just so much fun, enjoyed it so much. Nine months later, I met Lisa. She started shooting with me, and mm -hmm. Our dates would be reloading shotgun shells and uh, going out to shoot them the next day. So, um, yeah, that's how it started. And then um, the instruction part came much later, years later. I, I had a friend in the real estate business who married into a family from Louisiana. And they had a big plantation in Louisiana. And they would all duck hunt together. And his, his in-laws, his you know, brother-in-laws, et cetera, would all just make terrible fun of him because... He couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. And so he said, Joe, I need some help, man. They just tease me constantly. And so I took him out the skeet field and we started working and teaching some things like leads. And it totally changed the dynamic in that family. Um, they never saw him as this guy who just, you know, was a city boy. They saw him <laughs> as somebody who was gonna stand right in there and shoot with him. So uh, I saw how that change and I realized that it was not just about the sport, it was not about the outdoors, it wasn't about all that stuff, but it really more about affecting people's lives. So that's mm -hmm. really how I got into it. Yeah, so what what kind of instructions did you give? Well, you know, I started with skeet obviously, but I spread out into sporting clays and trap and then I spread out into the um, uh, basic pistol lessons. I became certified and uh, I taught uh, concealed handgun license classes um, Lisa and I taught those all over Texas from one side of the state to the other. And um, then I also taught a little bit of rifle and long range, short range, basic rifle um, and some other things with rifle. So what did you enjoy the most about giving instructions? Well, again, I think it's the, the people thing, you know, um, you know, I just met such great and interesting people. Um, it, it was just fabulous. And I think that a lot of these people, it was encouraging them, and some of them had low self-esteem. And getting into this sport and realizing it was something that they could do to uh, to really kind of fulfill that inner need, so to speak. I know it was for me when Jim Butler introduced me to it. I needed a little encouragement at that time, and it was a huge ego boost for me. It was just uh, very fulfilling. And so I saw this in a lot of people females especially. I got a lot of female clients who would come and were very timid, never shot a shotgun before. And uh, to watch them come out of their shell and, you know, just just excel spectacularly. And a lot of the principles that I would teach on the field, they actually applied to their careers and to their everyday lives. And I think for me, that was probably the best part. Um, I also, you know, I had some great mentors. I mentioned 
Jim Butler was a huge mentor for me. Um, Todd Bender, who's world champion many times over. Uh, Wayne Mays was a you know, great guy. Um, I didn't take a lot of lessons from Mays, but I did from Todd Bender and uh, from uh, several other people. Dan Carlisle was a huge influence to me. Dan Carlisle was a Olympic gold medalist. And I went to Dan one day and I said, Dan, I want to I, I want to be a sporting clays instructor, but don't get me wrong. I don't want to be a world champion sporting clays shooter because my goal is to help introduce people to the sport. And so Dan says, come on, let's go. So I hired Dan. He took me out and started teaching me how to be a good teacher. And that's probably some of the best instruction I received right there. Um, you know, Dan did some things with me that just opened up the world for me. And I'll always appreciate Dan Carlisle. Uh, Paul Jambrone, you know, young guy, we call him Little Paul. Uh, Paul just did a wonderful job. We conducted a clinic together where I helped put this clinic. And Paul was just a, a, a big inspiration for me, even though he's probably 30, 40 years my younger, um, my junior, but he's just a spectacular guy to watch shoot. Um, I so enjoyed watching the young people come up in the sport and there for a while I actually took a team of kids to tournaments and we all shot together and encouraged each other. Um, so yeah, we enjoyed that a lot. And I had clients from all over the world, um, 14 different countries, and it was just amazing. Uh, Boy Scouts, 4-H shooters, um, men, women, as I mentioned, uh, people who'd been in the sport a while but needed someone to look over their shoulder and work out some kinks. You know, sometimes there's you need someone else to identify just a little glitch in your shooting game, and yeah. so that was it. A lot of hunters. I, I worked with a lot of dove hunters, um, a lot of, you know, upland game hunters, and so, and, you know, we worked the gun safety thing like crazy. And then we kind of worked on whatever their particular sport was and uh, what they're most interested in. We later got into uh, the corporate shooting events, which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, we did corporate team building with using shotguns and clay targets. And uh, some of our clients, there are big clients like Chick-fil-A, most wonderful group of guys I've ever been around. Um, just had a ball shooting with those guys and uh, applying some principles that they could take back to apply to their businesses. So we, like team building type sports. Team building type sports, yes, exactly. And so we did that for Chick-fil-A, Taco Bueno, you know, um, all these little companies like that. A lot of bachelor parties we did. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we would have people like Canadians who would come to Austin for the F1 races and they would want to, you know, go shooting while they're waiting for the races. And some of these um, firearms that we possess weren't allowed in uh, uh, Canada. And mm -hmm. so they got to come down here and let off some steam, enjoy life, do something they've never had the opportunity to do before. And it was just wonderful seeing those people, uh, you know, get to have a ball like that. Yeah, yeah. So what, if anything, did, did, you, did you learn anything from the people you taught? Yeah, man, did I, you know, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, there's a couple of things that come to mind. Uh, I had a guy who worked for Dell who, um, I, I'm not sure what happened with this guy, but he didn't really have any legs. He had prostheses and he didn't really have any arms. They were definitely uh, malformed. And so he was just barely able to pull the trigger on a shotgun. Um, but what a guy, man. You know, to watch him apply himself and the determination he had to get better. And and I got to tell you, I, uh, you know, if I had half of his drive and I, with all my body parts, you know, man, that just really inspired me that you know, no matter what life throws at you, you can get around it and you can find ways to still enjoy life and to still find the champion within you. And that was kind of our, our tagline for a long time was, you know, find the champion within you. And, and it doesn't mean that you're going to go win gold medals, but, but it's a champion's attitude that lies within each of us. And I think that's just highly important that everyone find that. So, you know, I, there's some things that stand out in my mind throughout my shooting career. And, you know, some of the tournaments we went to, we, we just met all kinds of great people there, at least not both did. 
And uh, I mean, not to say there's not some people you'd wish you didn't meet, <laughs> <laughs> but there's almost always just wonderful people, um, all walks of life. These people are different religious values, different political uh, beliefs, you know, different jobs, different things. But we all centered around something that we had in common, you know, this freedom to go out and enjoy this sport and the camaraderie that came with it and and the constant supporting each other. Um, I knew some squads that they would not allow you to shoot with them if you were negative. They just didn't allow these negative comments, mm -hmm. these, you know, sourpuss faces, if you will, um, because they wanted positivity around them. And that's a very, very important aspect of life. Um, surrounding yourself with positive people is a very good thing to do. And avoiding people who um, don't want to change. They're in this negative mindset. They just enjoy it. They don't want to be there. So what is your most memorable tournament or time during that period that you really enjoyed? Well, from standpoint of competition, um, I was in Dallas, Texas, and... I got to shoot um, the doubles event with Wayne Mays. He and Todd Bender dominated the world of skeet shooting for so many years. And Wayne Mays was very famous and just a real gentleman. And so to be on a squad with Wayne Mays shooting doubles was pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't shoot terrible, but I didn't shoot that bad. Uh, but I just enjoyed shooting beside a Southern gentleman like that. And then um, the next day, uh, I walked out in the 28 gauge event, which is like my event, and I missed the very first target. And it was like, oh, so deflating because I got 99 more to go. And I'm, you know, so I caught myself real quick and I'm like, this is not what Wayne Mays would do. And so I caught myself and I stayed up and I hit the next 99 targets. And the referee afterwards walked straight up to me, bypassed everybody else shook my hand and said, that's the best shooting I've seen all weekend. And I was oblivious because I was not really paying attention to what was going on. I'm just focusing on keeping my mental attitude where it needed to be. And a lot of that I learned from Todd Bender and watching Wayne Mays. And uh, it was huge. It was just huge. So it didn't win any money. It didn't win any prizes. But it was me overcoming my own emotions and being able to fight back. Um, later that weekend, I got to watch Wayne Mays shoot his 100th, 100 straight with a 410. So that is like no one's ever done it before or since, to my knowledge. And that was a huge event, shooting 100, 100 straights. Um, no one's ever done it in their career in shooting. So what a weekend, you know, all the way around getting to shoot with Wayne, watching him do that, and then having my own little sense of self-accomplishment in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a very memorable experience. So just to wrap up, is there anything else, um, any difficulties in people or um, closing message you want to give? Yeah, you know, I think, um, first of all, let me just say to all of my students, and there's just so many, I can't even remember the names of all of them, but I, I will say that so many of them uh, stuck with me and, um, use the principles in their lives, use the principles in their shooting game, whatever it might have been. Uh, there's a, another event I'm going to go back to right now. <laughs> a gentleman came to me for lessons and he says, um, do you know why I'm here? I said, no. He said, well, you know, Bob, such and such. And I went, yeah, yeah, he's one of my students. And he said, well, he's the reason I'm here. And I'm like, tell me more. You've got my curiosity. He said, well, Bob hunts with us on our dub lease every year. And he says, Bob, can't hit anything. And he's the brunt of the joke at our dub lease. And so I'm like, really? And he says, yep. He said, then the other day I'm out on the dub lease and there's somebody behind the dam on a pond and they're shooting like crazy. They're just knocking dub down left and right. So I go over there to see who's shooting and here sits Bob. And Bob, who's over here shooting with you? Bob says, nobody. Well, who's hitting all these dub? And Bob said, me. He said, well, what happened to you? And he said, Joe Schramm. Now, not patting myself on the back, but this guy just saw Bob in a whole new context, whole new frame of mind, whole new respect, and he wanted to go find out what happened to Bob. He came to see me. Now, it's not that I did anything spectacular at all. 
It's just I gave him an opportunity and showed him what he needed to learn early on in his shooting career yeah. that he just was never taught. So once you learn these fundamentals, I mean, it applies all the way across the board. But just hearing that story from him about Bob and how that, you know, it made a significant difference between Bob and his friends, no doubt. So that was a lot of fun. But, you know, there were some difficulties. And some of the difficulties is I had plantar fasciitis. I don't know if you know what that is in your feet. But if you ever get it, you'll know because if you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, you won't be able to walk. It's the stretching of your ligament down here, and it's so painful. And so um, I'm out in 100-degree heat day after day, um, you know, standing on the concrete, um, icing my feet down at night with frozen water bottles and doing stretches. That was extremely difficult. Um, there were some people, and you're going to find this in life, there are people who are little people, little-minded thinkers, um, you know, bureaucrats, politicians, you know, just to name a few, people who get put in positions of power that are just, shouldn't be in that position. So those people tried to be difficult for me and for my business. And I gotta tell you, they didn't cause near the difficulty they thought they would because people saw their actions. They saw their actions against me and that just drove more people to me. People knew I had a kind and gentle spirit and they wanted to come and take lessons from me and be around me. I had one client um, who was a very well-to-do man who would call me up and hire me every day for a month. And he would say, um, hey, do you got time today? I need some Joe time. I'm like, Joe time, what do you mean? He goes, man, I just don't know what, I like to be around you, you know? And I'm so dumbfounded by that statement because I'm like, man, it, I, I get more out of us being together than you do. He goes, oh, no, no, you don't. Because I really looked up to this guy and thought, wow, this is a very successful guy. I'm learning a lot. Listen to him. He'd written some books about management. And uh, uh, John, if you ever watch this, thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate all that you did for me. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Those little people in life, you know, they're going to try to separate us. They're going to try to fragment us. They're going to try to get us angry with each other. And that's going along a lot in this world right now. You see that every aspect of this world. There are these elitists that want to step in and cause problems in society. And I say we don't let them do that. I say no matter what political page you're on, what religion you are, not are, you know, whatever you like to worship, we have to find some commonality where we can talk and that we can understand that there are people who would like to control us all for the benefit of themselves, not for your benefit, not for my benefit, but themselves, a group of elitists. And shooting sports um, helped bridge that gap for a lot of people. So whatever you may think about guns or shooting or anything, it's okay. Um, there's a lot of people who enjoy it, and we use that to help bring people together. Now, I don't know what your favorite sport is or what it is you like to do in life with your spare time, but maybe you can use that to help bring people together mm -hmm. and to not let the world fragment us right now. It's very important at this time that we all stand together and we fight back because together, we are a formidable force and they will not be able to divide us as long as we set our mind to it. I think that's all I have. Do you have anything else? No, nope. beautiful stories. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a blessing. My life has been so great sitting beside this woman. Mm, likewise. Ciao for now.